The pandemic has really changed the way that we consume our content now. A lot of people are staying home and watching their TV and movies from the seat of their couch. Not a lot of people are going to the movie theater anymore. A lot of our new movies coming out are being streamed on Paramount Plus and Hulu and Netflix and Disney Plus, so there isn't really a reason to go out and watch movies anymore. Now that everybody's watching movies at home, a lot of you guys are maybe wondering, can I start a home theater? Or maybe you have started to set up a home theater. And that's what we're going to talk about today is the basics, how to set up a 5.1 home theater. We're going to go in layman's terms to talk about everything how to place those five speakers, what do each of those five speakers do, how do we hook it up to a receiver. We're gonna talk about all that stuff here in this video, and I'm gonna to continue to make series of videos, how to do this, how to do this, how to do a 7.1 system, how to add an amplifier. We're gonna go through that in different episodes, but this one's gonna be how to set up a basic 5.1 home theater. My name is Barrett, this is Specatech. Welcome to the channel. Cut, this is not Specatech. What do you mean guy. it's not Specatech? Read the script. It's in the script. Is this the K Pace Tech. This is not his channel? Well, why do you have it in the script? Do I need to hire somebody else for this job? job? Get it out of the script. So how do we start off with our 5.1 channel system? Well, let's understand the terminology. Five channels means five speakers. And we're gonna see this reference in amplifiers too, five channel amplifiers. It just means the number of speakers that you will be using in your home theater. Five is the minimum. So a five channel system consists of a front left speaker, a center channel speaker, a front right speaker, a side left speaker, and a side right speaker. Now, mind you, I said side, not rear. In a five channel system, the surround speakers are on the side of your seats, on the side of you, not behind you. A lot of people kind of put them in between, which you can get away with, but technically they're supposed to be on the side. We'll talk about that when we get to placement. But those are your five speakers in a five channel system. Now, what about that point one? What does that mean? Five speakers plus one subwoofer, 5.1. Five speakers plus one subwoofer. The subwoofer gives you those low frequency effects that give you the thunder, that give you the grenades, things that rumble in your chest. That's what the subwoofer is for. That's the point one. So those five speakers plus that one subwoofer is your 5.1 system. Now you saw when I was naming off those speakers, they also had locations, front left, front right, center, side left, side right. They're actually placed in that same spot that the name suggests based off your seating location. So if I'm sitting in the middle of my seat, then I want my front left speaker to be in the front left of my seat. I want my center channel to be where it sounds, in the center, the center of the screen. I want my front right speaker to be on the right side of the screen or the right side of my seat. My side left is on the side of the couch and my side right is on the right side of the couch. So the names also suggest their placement. So that's a really good, easy thumb to follow, a good uh, rule of thumb to follow when placing those five speakers. Now your subwoofer is a little bit more tricky to place. A lot of people will stick it in front of their, uh, in between their central channel and their front speakers. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not, but let's just put it there for now. So now we have a subwoofer placed in between our front left and center speaker. Let's just use it as an example. So that's kind of how the layout starts. Now we're not gonna talk about choosing speakers in this particular video, because that's a whole nother tangent that we don't need to go on just yet. So let's just say you've already picked out five speakers of your choice. Now we know what the five and the 5.1 means. We know what the 0.1 means in the 5.1 system. And now we know where to place them based off of their name. Now, what you have to hook them up to is what we call an AV receiver. AV stands for audio video receiver. And it also does what the name suggests. It takes in all the audio signal, takes in all the video signal and processes it and then sends it to where it needs to go. An AV receiver has amplifiers built inside that you can plug your speakers straight to to get the sound back. So in a five channel receiver, it means that you have five speakers. Again, I told you five channels will be referred through a lot of different gear. So five channel receiver means that it has five speakers available to use in your home theater, 5.1 in this case. So you're gonna plug your speakers to that AV receiver. 
Your AV receiver is going to take care of all the audio, take care of all the video. If you have a DVD player, if you have a fire stick, whatever you may have for video, it all plugs in there. It's your central hub. So everything that you need will all be here in that receiver. Now, plugging your speakers to your AV receiver is actually a very easy thing. On the back of your speakers, you're typically going to see a black and a red terminal. That's where you plug in your speaker wire. Now, the speaker wire you need will be decided by how far your AV receiver is from your speaker. So you're going to want to get good enough length so that you can carry that load from your AV receiver to your speakers. Now, on the back of your speakers, again, you saw the same red and black indicators that tells you which one's positive and negative. Red is typically positive and black is typically negative. Now take a look on the back of your receiver. You're also going to see that same color coding, black for negative and red for positive. Now if you look above those speaker terminals, you'll have speaker labels. On your receiver, it'll say front left, center, front right, side surround left, side surround right, just like we mentioned in the beginning. So everything has its name. So plugging up your speakers is really easy. You want to take your front wire, your front left speaker wire, and plug it in to the front left speaker wire terminal on the back of your AV receiver. Remember to match your colors. You want red to go to red, positive to positive. You want black to go to black, negative to negative, so that you don't have any impedance issues, you don't have any uh, shortage issues or phase issues. So we want to make sure that you color code them all the way. Make sure that the wire lines up. Now, I recommend getting wire that's also red and black because it just makes things easier. But as long as you remember which one you plug in, make sure you follow that same wire to the receiver and you'll have no problem. So again, take the front left wire, plug it into the front left on the back of your receiver and do that same thing for your next four speakers until you've hooked up all five speakers. It's actually a really easy thing to do and it's really hard to mess up, but just make sure you pay close attention. So for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and assume you have a modern TV, a TV that was made in the last eight to 10 years. So it has smart capabilities. It has some sort of HDMI, things like that. We're going to assume that you have this in your home theater and you want to use your existing TV to plug into your receiver. Again, an AV receiver also processes video, not just audio. So you can plug in all of your inputs. And what I mean by inputs is your Blu-ray player, if you're using a Fire Stick, a cable box, you can plug all this into your AV receiver and have a whole home theater. So let's say you have a TV and you wanna use that with your home theater. You're gonna need an HDMI cord. On the back of your AV receiver, you're gonna see HDMI out. And you're gonna to wanna to plug that to the receiver and plug the other end of the HDMI to the input of your TV. Now you may have an ARC input or an eARC input, but if you don't, just plug it in through HDMI 1, 2, 3, or 4, whatever you may have. So you want to plug your HDMI out to your TV because that's what's going to send a video signal back to your television. And that's how you get your video to come from your receiver. Now, while you're back there, you're going to see HDMI in 1, HDMI in 2, HDMI in 3, and you're going to see some names on top of it, like CD or Blu-ray player or cable box. You're going to see different names kind of suggesting, hey, you can plug this here. Now, you don't have to plug those certain devices to that name. You can mix and match it and rename it inside your receiver if you'd like to. But to keep it simple, let's just say HDMI 1 is your Blu-ray player. Well, you can plug that HDMI 1 into that Blu-ray player, and now your Blu-ray player is plugged up. Let's say you also have a Fire Stick. Let's plug that into HDMI 2. Now we have my Blu-ray player and my Fire Stick plugged up, all in my receiver. And all that information will now be sent to your TV with just a press of a button. Now let's go back to the speakers and talk about placement. As we know, it's easy to place our speakers based off the name that they have. Front left goes in the front left of your screen. Center goes in the center of your screen, either underneath it or above it. Your right speaker goes on the right side of the screen. Your side left speaker goes on the side left of the couch. And then the same thing for the right, goes on the right side of the couch. So those are really easy to take care of. But we want to make sure that we have a good enough distance. You can't just put speakers too close. There's a really good rule of thumb that you want your front left speaker and your front right speaker to at least be six feet apart. And the reason why we want that is because we want it wide enough that you can hear the difference between the two. If you don't have it wide enough, it'll all sound like it's coming from one spot and it'll defeat the purpose of making a home theater. It won't sound like surround sound. So we want at least six feet of space between the left speaker and the right speaker. 
about maybe three or so feet from the main speaker, meaning the front speakers, and the center channel. Now your center channel has placement requirements too. Of course it goes in the center, but you don't want it to be too high or too low or too far away from your screen. You want whatever screen you're using, TV or projector screen, you want your center channel to typically be just underneath that or just above it. Most of the time, just underneath that. There's a rule of thumb when it comes to how tall your speakers can be. You want your speakers to be about ear level, meaning the top of the speaker is about where your ears are when you're sitting down. So if you sit down in your seat, your speakers should be right around that, that area too as far as how tall they are. And the reason we want this is because we, we want all the sounds to be realistic, we want all the sounds to be at the same volume, and we want all the sounds to reach your ears at the same time. So we want our speakers to be what we call ear level. The center channel is, is often a hard speaker to get ear level because if you put it ear level, it may be in front of the screen. So we want it to be just below the screen and if you need to, you can angle it up to get it to project towards your ears. So the center channel is the most important speaker in the system. The center channel has all the dialogue. Usually everything that you can see on the screen is happening from that center channel. So you wanna make sure you place it well. So remember in the beginning of the video when I said the side surrounds are meant to be on the side in a five channel system, not behind you? You may be thinking, if it's not behind me, how do I get the surround sound effects? Well, when you have a five channel system and your AV receiver is processing the audio, it's processing audio from the side. It's not giving you the rear surround effects because you don't have speakers back there. you are not supposed to. The sound that you're getting out of your side surrounds is what's happening on the side during any movie watching that you're doing or any TV shows that you may be watching. It's all coming from the side, so it's best to have your speakers from the side as well. If you put them behind you, it's gonna sound weird because if somebody runs past you from the side but doesn't go behind you, it's gonna sound like they're behind you even though visually they ran past you not behind you. So you want your side speakers to be on the side because that's how your receiver is going to process it. Now let's talk about that pesky subwoofer. Now to keep it simple again, we're gonna put it in between our front left and center speaker on the floor. Subwoofers don't need to be at your level. It's a sound that is omnidirectional, meaning it's big waves that travel wherever it wants to go. So you don't have to get it off the floor like the rest of your speakers. So keep it on the ground. Now turning it around, you're gonna see a plate amplifier with a different set of knobs. You're gonna see a volume knob, a crossover knob, usually a phase switch from zero to 180 degrees, and then most likely you have a power toggle switch. Let's talk about that. So we know what a power toggle switch does. It can either be on, off, or standby. I recommend putting it on standby because that allows it to auto sense a signal. So when you turn on your system and it starts hearing that you're playing an audio file, a movie, a, some music, it'll automatically turn on the sub itself. And then after a few minutes of not hearing anything, it'll automatically shut down. So I recommend putting it on standby. Now the volume knob is also uh, a knob that I wanna take attention to as well, because you may think that this is where you need to make the volume up and down, but it's not really what you wanna do. You wanna actually set this volume knob to 12 o'clock position. You wanna set it to its upright position. So if this is all the way down, this is all the way up, you want it to be halfway up at the 12 o'clock position, whatever the halfway is on your sub. We'll talk about why in a second, but go ahead and set that volume knob to 12 or halfway. Now your crossover, you have usually zero to, let's say zero to 240 or zero to 180 hertz. Hertz is how we measure frequencies, how low or how high pitch a sound is. So the smaller the number, the lower the bass, the lower the note. The higher the number, the higher the frequency, the higher the bass. So we wanna put this on LFE or max. You wanna turn it all the way up. And we'll tell you why also in just a second. Now we've set our knobs, but we haven't yet connected our subwoofer to our receiver. Now let's go back to the back of a receiver again. You're gonna see an, a section where it says subwoofer out or subwoofer one. You're gonna plug in an RCA cable and that RCA cable is gonna go from your receiver to the back of your subwoofer. On the subwoofer, you may see LFE, 
you may see line in, you may see RCA1, whatever you see, you're gonna plug in your subwoofer to that RCA cable. And that's what's gonna send signal from your receiver to your subwoofer. So when you're watching movies, you get the bass that you're looking for. Now you don't have to plug the subwoofer with speaker wire. You don't have to do that in a 5.1 channel system. There are subs that accept speaker wire, but in a basic home theater like this, you won't find that. So you need a long enough RCA cable that's gonna plug into your subwoofer and go all the way to wherever your AV receiver is at. And that's gonna help give you the signal for your bass notes. All right, so we place all our speakers, we position them well, we have our subwoofer hooked up and it's set to the right settings. Now we're ready to power on our receiver. So go ahead and plug it in. You're ready to go. Now, if you're into home, if you're just now getting into home theater, you're going to have a receiver that has calibration. Calibration allows the receiver to listen to the acoustics in your room and fix anything it may deem bad. So what you're gonna wanna do is take the supplied calibration mic that you got in your box and plug it into the mic input of your receiver. And you're gonna wanna put that mic in your seating position where you're going to sit most of the time. Now I'm not going to go through calibration and what that is in this video because your receiver is going to walk you through it just perfectly. So follow its on-screen menus, but you're going to want to take that mic and put it in your seating position and let it do its calibration. It's going to play a series of test tones and whistles and pops and try to see what's going on in your room. And it's going to try to measure your speaker's ability to be accurate and articulate and see how far they're placed away from each other and just give you a whole home home theater um, feel is what it's trying to do. It's trying to take some of the bad characteristics of your room and eliminate them. It's a really cool feature. So plug that in, put it in your seating position. Now on your screen, it'll tell you to put it ear level. So you're gonna wanna get that microphone up about ear level, because again, that's the golden rule, have everything around ear level. If you don't have something to prop it up with, I stack some pillows, as long as you don't block the mic, I stack pillows so you can get it up to ear level. A lot of manufacturers are now throwing in tripods so you can get a tripod, whatever you want to do. Just get it ear level so that it's at it has its best chance of being as accurate as possible. Run calibration and then we'll go on to the next step. Now, when you've ran calibration, you're now inside the menus of your AV receiver. Now, different AV companies have different menus. So I'm not gonna speak on one, but what you wanna do from here is sit down in your sitting position. And if you have a friend, this will help you. But if not, you want some sort of way to measure the distance of your speakers from where they are to your seat where you're gonna sit. So what I would do is I would sit in my seat and I wouldn't measure how far each speaker is from my ear. So I would go and measure my front left speaker where it's at and I would take a measuring tape or a laser pointer and I would point it right next to my ear. How far is that speaker from my ear? You wanna write these measurements down and you want to put them inside your receiver. In your menus, there'll be a, a tab called distance. This allows you to go in and set literally your distance from your seat from that speaker. And this is important to get correct because this is gonna help the receiver figure out how loud and how much delay one speaker should have so that all the sound hits your ear at the same time. Now, a lot of us don't have symmetrical rooms. Some have open floor plans, some have odd rooms with different weird angles, different walls and things like that, or furniture that they can't move. So sometimes we can't get our speakers placed correctly. Sometimes your left speaker, your front left speaker may be a lot closer to you than your front right speaker. And that's where distance comes in. You wanna measure the distance of all your speakers so that your receiver knows, hey, your front left speaker is a lot closer to you than your front right. Let me make an adjustment for you. If you don't do this, you're gonna have a very weird sound and things are gonna sound slightly off and it'll take you out of the immersion. Now, while you're going through different menus inside your AV receiver, you're gonna see a lot of different categories like levels and crossover and things like that. When you're starting off in a home theater, that's a lot of information overload. I actually have a how-to playlist already built together on my channel how to set up a crossover, how to set up phase, and all sorts of other things that really help you fine tune your home theater. So I'm not gonna put it in this video, but I will refer you down to the description down below to my how-to playlist where you can find some nitty gritty things to help you further 
take your home theater to the next step when you're ready. Now, there are so many other things that we can talk about, about how to set up a 5.1 channel home theater, but this is what's going to get you started and get you getting good sound and enjoying your movies in a new way. There's a lot of things that I can say that I didn't, so if you have any other questions, please feel free to get down in the comment section and let me know, because I and a lot of other people can help you out. Again, my how-to playlist is available, so if you really want to know some fine-tuned questions, they are down there in that how-to playlist. I think I'm going to do maybe how to set up a 7.1 channel system and compare which one's better, 5.1 or 7.1. I'll talk about amplification if you want external power. We're, we're going to work our way up. So we'll do 7.1 channel systems, then we'll do a Dolby Atmos system, then we'll talk about how to add amplifiers, how to add a preprocessor. We'll go up in levels ever so often. If you think this would be a good thing to do, let me know that down below in the comment section. Also tell me down below in the comment section, what did you think about this video? Is this helpful to anybody? Let me know that down below in the comment section. If you are a fan of KPA Sky and you've been here forever, please help me help others get started on their home theater journey because it is not easy. Please let them know any other advice that I did not say and we will see you guys in the next video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already because if I helped you, you owe me one. I'll see you guys in the next video. KPA Sky out. Peace. You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down